Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Life. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and finish disassembling this M54 that came out of a 2001 BMW 330 convertible. Uh, the car was overheated. The engine had no compression on most of the cylinders, which is why we're gonna go ahead and take it apart. I'm gonna try to see if the engine is salvageable. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take everything apart, look at all the damage, and we'll go from there. In the, in the previous videos, we've already removed most of the stuff, the valve covers, the Vanos unit, intake manifold, all that stuff's gone. Pretty much what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna remove the camshafts, we're gonna remove the head, and if we have enough time, we'll also remove the oil pan. So let's go ahead and get started. So ideally, you would want the camshaft locking set. This I got off of ECS tuning. Uh, it's got the two blocks to lock them. This is the TDC pin. This will lock the flywheel uh, and keep it at top dead center. But as you can see, we don't have a flywheel on our engine, so we're not gonna be using this. And you would wanna lock the camshafts, that way they don't move but we're not gonna be doing that either. And this right here is the Vanos timing set. And the only thing we're gonna be using from here today is this locking pin to lock the, uh, the secondary timing chain tensioner. And if you don't have this exact set, you can get any kind of pin that's like this diameter that will work to lock the actual uh, timing chain tensioner. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go in and loosen up these bolts. These are 10 millimeter nuts. And then we have these three E8 uh, external torques uh, bolts as well, which we're gonna loosen as well. Now that those are loose, we're gonna loosen all these 10 millimeter nuts. Now we're gonna go ahead and put that pin for the secondary timing chain tensioner. The way you do this is through the back. There's an actual hole in the tensioner itself. Once you compress, the tensioner, you can go ahead and stick this pin through. Now we have that compressed. Now we're gonna be removing this primary chain tensioner. Uh, this is, you can use a 32 millimeter socket or a open end wrench, whatever you wanna use to go ahead and loosen this out. Here's the primary chain tensioner. All right, so now this is where you would want to put your lock blocks for the camshafts in. Uh, they usually go in the back right here. But since we're not gonna be doing that, let's go ahead and remove these little plates. And these are the ones that are held in with the 10 millimeter nuts. So you would want to lock the camshafts, that way you don't have to worry about retiming them or any of that. But since we're gonna be uh, pretty much disassembling everything, we're not gonna be doing that anyways. Now we're gonna remove this thrust washer that's on the exhaust side. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and remove these external torque sockets that we loosened. Now we'll remove this cap. Now we'll go ahead and remove the sprockets with the secondary timing chain. We're gonna go ahead and remove this helix cup as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove this tensioner. It's held in with 10 millimeter bolts, one right here and top. There's one more right here. So there's four bolts. We're gonna go ahead and remove this timing chain guide, which is held in with the E8 bolt, which is the external Torx. You wanna be very careful when you're removing bolts around here. That way you don't drop them into the engine, especially if you're just doing this to do the head gasket or whatever. For us, it doesn't really matter since we're gonna be taking everything apart. And we've got one more bolt. All 
now we're going to go ahead and remove these studs. They are 12 millimeter hex. And this is why you want to lock the camshafts in. That way the camshaft doesn't move. But what we're going to do, we're just going to hold it with a 24 millimeter open-ended wrench. As you can see, there are grooves on the actual camshaft that allow you to do that. Do not place it anywhere else but those grooves. I was going to remove these all the way. Now we're going to go ahead and remove this timing chain off. And what you would want to do is zip tie this chain to the top if you're not going to be disassembling the whole thing. That way it doesn't fall into the engine and doesn't come off of the actual uh, primary sprocket on the bottom. Now we're going to go ahead and remove these 10 millimeter studs off of the intake side. So this side is the intake side because the intake manifold goes through this way. And this is the exhaust side. And on the intake side, you're going to have an E. On the exhaust side, you're going to have an A marked on all of your camshaft. So now we're going to do the same thing, hold it with a 24 millimeter wrench. So now what we're going to do, we're going to actually remove the camshaft itself. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hook up your, the crankshaft pulley. So the mark on the pulley, this mark on the pulley, you want it to be about right here, which is about 45 degrees. So you're, you're going to turn it counterclockwise that way. That way you have less interference when you're removing the camshaft and you don't really have to worry about anything else like touching or bending or messing up. So we're not going to bother with that. We're just going to go ahead and twist the exhaust camshaft about 40 degrees this way. And that should give us enough space to be able to remove all the caps without any of the, uh, the lifters or anything touching. So now we're going to go ahead and remove all of the caps except for A3 and A5. This is gonna be 11 millimeter socket. So as I said, we're gonna go ahead and loosen all of the nuts off except for A3 and A5, which is right here. And we're also gonna go and remove all of the caps that we take the nuts off of, except for A1. Now we're going to go ahead and remove all the caps besides A1, A3, and A5. All right, so now for A3 and A5, we're going to loosen the nuts a quarter turn at a time. We're going to go from here to here to here to here and just do a quarter turn at a time until all the nuts are completely loose and we can remove them. Now that we have all the nuts loose, we're going to go ahead and pull off the caps. And then we're going to go ahead and remove this camshaft. That should not have happened. What do we do? So this should have popped off without all that stuff messing up. But now that it did, we really can't do anything about it. So what should have happened was that. But as you can see, this camshaft has been scored really bad on this side. Well, there's the exhaust camshaft. All right, so as you saw, when I removed that camshaft, the lifter caps, the actual lifter cap block, it also came up with it. And then all those lifter caps just fell apart pretty much. If you want to prevent that, what you can do is once you have the caps removed on some of them, like at A2 and A7, just use the nuts and just tie them down finger tight and just 
keep those nuts in there without the cap there. That way when you do go to lift up the camshaft, the lifter block won't come up. It'll just stay there. So that way what happened to me doesn't happen to you. So just do that before you move the camshaft. That way you don't have to worry about that. On this side, which is the intake side, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be removing all of the caps besides uh, E4 and E6. So these two right here, we're not gonna loosen these at all. We're gonna loosen the rest and remove all the caps except for E1. So E1 won't have any nuts on it, but the cap will still be there. All the rest of the caps besides E4 and E6 will be removed. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're gonna do first, before we start loosening any of the nuts, we're gonna go ahead and rotate the uh, intake cam 40 degrees. Just like that. That's so going to remove all the caps besides E1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and secure that this uh, lifter block so it doesn't happen like how it happened last time. So what you could do is put some kind of spacer or some washers or something right here uh, before you put the nuts on. That way this gap that's not threaded, uh, it'll be taken care of and the lifter block won't have any room to move. But for us, we're just going to go and just tighten it a little bit. All right, now that we have that secure, we're gonna do the same thing that we did on the other side by removing them a quarter turn at a time. Uh, we'll start off right here, go right here, come back, and right there. Now we're gonna remove this camshaft. Now we have both camshafts off. Here's a lifter block. We're just gonna keep that on there for right now. Uh, we're gonna keep these nuts on here as well. Now we're gonna go and remove the head itself. All right, so now we're gonna go and remove all of the bolts that are holding the head onto the block. We're gonna start in the middle and then work our way outwards. So we'll start right here. These are gonna be uh, E12, so external torque socket 12. You could do this even with the camshafts in uh, there's enough groove, there's a groove in, on the camshaft itself that allows you to access the bolt. So you do not have to remove the camshafts. The main reason I did it was because people requested it. You could just lock them and then just uh, remove the bolts and remove the whole head with the camshaft. Now that all the bolts are loosened, we're gonna start removing them. Right, for me, it's just gonna be easier to go in and remove this uh, lifter block so I get the rest of the bolts out. So I'm just gonna go in and remove it. Right, there's two more E8 bolts right here.
Here's the head gasket. And as you can see, it's pretty much warped. But where did it blow? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I you see there's some seepage right here, but like it doesn't seem that that major. Let's look at the bottom of the head. It doesn't seem too bad either. The only spot that looks like coolant and oil was mixing is about right here. I don't really see it anywhere else. So I guess we'll just keep disassembling and we'll see how bad it is. So I'm pretty sure when it overheated, the head itself just got warped and that's why there's no compression. And I mean, the car wasn't even, too, like it would turn over, but it wouldn't even be able to like start up at all. So I mean, it was pretty bad. So I'm pretty sure the head is warped. We'll check all that stuff later on once I have the rest of the engine disassembled. We'll use like a little straight edge or something and check all the clearances and all that. But that's it for this video, guys. I know I was gonna do the oil pan, but this video is already too long. So I'll do the oil pan and whatever else we wanna remove, like the rest of the timing chain and all that in the next video. So stay tuned for the next video, guys. Thanks for watching and leave a comment down below with any questions you may have.